Yo, what's going on everybody and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cutters. In today's episode, we are going to be revealing some mysterious stuff. So without further ado, let's do it. So if you guys watched the exhaust video for the IS, you guys will probably remember me talking about how the IS is going to become a project car eventually. Well, that might be coming a lot sooner than I had expected because this last weekend, I have just found another major part of what that is going to be. So, yeah, let me show you guys what I found. Bum bum bum! It is a Toyota 1JZ GTE VVTi cylinder head. Yeah! And it looks good. Well, as good as it's gonna look like right now without any washing or sandblasting or prepping. So uh, yeah, basically what this video is gonna be is me going through the entire cylinder head just to see what we're working with here. For those of you that do not know, I have two spare uh, 2JZ GE motors sitting in my backyard. One of them's completely taken apart. The other one is still a long block and is sitting on a little dolly. But uh, yeah, basically I have two good blocks, two good cranks. And now with the 1JZ head, I'm planning on making a 1.5JZ for the IS300 because I've always, always since the first time I ever saw or even knew what a 1.5JZ was, I fell in love with it. And that was actually nine years ago when the video for Serial 9 first dropped and uh, he was going through the motor and doing pulls on the street with the gold Cressida. Ever since I saw that video, like I was like, you know what, one day I'm going to build a 1.5 JZ and now I have a head, so it's going to happen. Alrighty, so this thing has actually been already taken apart probably like four times. The original owner of this head had already taken it apart just to take pictures for the ad. Um, and me, I just I already took it apart and I already went through it. So I know that we have a pretty decent casting. I mean... I'm not really gonna find out if the casting is 100% until I take it to the shop, until I hot tank it, completely clean it, and pressure check the casting for any cracks. Right away, it's just normal wear, burned oil. I mean, from what the guy who sold it to me said, he was making, I believe, close to 600 on a 1JZ. And he ended up getting rod knock on cylinder one, so. That's the only reason why he parted out the head. So, uh, all the cam journals, they all look good. Uh, there's a little bit of scoring on maybe one or two of them, but it's nothing that really can't just be buffed out, polished, you know? So, on the opposite side. So on the chamber side, we can see that the valves, well, the exhaust valves were getting a little bit on the hot side. And I mean, this is what, yeah, this is, Cylinder number one, there really is no uh, piston to head contact. But yeah, there's uh, there's detonation marks on, I wanna say five of the six cylinders. I mean, there's really no visible cracks anywhere between the exhaust to the coolant or from the intake to the coolant. Um, yeah, just looks like normal wear. The cams are back here. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a little bit of scoring on one or two of the journals, but it's nothing too crazy. The lobes look good. I might use these cams. I might have them sent out. I might have them uh, reground for a different profile. The lifters, those lifters are going to go bye-bye. We're going to be swapping them out for solids. Um, this thing is going to be semi-performance package, so... We're gonna be doing some pretty intense porting work on this. Now I know 1JZ, 2JZ heads, they don't need port work. But if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it full out the first time just so that the head doesn't have to come off and I don't have to mess with it, especially with it being in the car. I can just do it nice once, that's it. All of these valves are gonna be replaced. Like I said, semi performance package. Uh, I'm gonna go with stainless. Probably Inconel on the exhaust. I'm not sure yet. I just got to see how much they cost, how much I have for my budget. So that's where we're at as far as it looks 
now just looking at it here with it taken apart just from you know my experience pulling motors apart pulling heads off and just diagnosing failures and all of that stuff so everything looks good so far i mean let's see where is it right here you can see that the head has been milled before so i mean yeah i got to take a measurement of the actual casting thickness so uh, we'll do that once we get to the shop so uh yeah let's go so we're at the shop we brought the head cabeza and we're here with andrew so homie what up baby yeah basically we're gonna be going through the head we're gonna see if it's good if it's not good we're gonna clean it wash it and all that stuff, but we're basically gonna go through how we do it every day. And he usually does most of the head work here, so that's why we got this fool right here. So, what usually goes on when a head comes in? All right, so what we usually do, get a visual inspection when it comes in. So usually we'll have a customer come in, bring it out, put it on a cart, do more or less a visual inspection, check it out, see what's going on. Uh, any wiring, any loose nuts, bolts, anything that could fall off in the washer. Don't want to lose anything, any uh, electrical components. Don't want to get that messed up. Uh, any variable valve timing uh, components. Uh, you don't want to get water in them. Uh, if you do, you got to take it apart. So you want to do a basic visual inspection. Make sure there's nothing there. You doesn't want to get washed or wet. Toss it in the washer. You gotta get it nice and hot. Get all that grease, all that gunk and carbon buildup off of there. Uh, Which, as you guys can see, it's already been through the wash. Nice and clean, baby. Nice and clean. And then what? And then we proceed to uh, get it out of the wash, rinse it off, air it off, bring it on a fresh clean counter, uh, get it all set up for a more of inspection. Uh, pull it apart. Start with the process of making sure it's not too warped. So you want to put a straight edge across that. Uh, vacuum check it. Now, this is a personal project, so you wouldn't do that. If you know you're going to go through it, then you don't have to worry about that. No. Uh, for the general population though, that comes in here and people who just come in and want their stuff done, uh, pressure test, straight edge, make sure the vacuum check's good. Sometimes people are just cheap or they just want the bare minimum work. Uh, a lot of cheap folks out there. A lot of cheap people. <laughs> Don't be a cheap person. Yeah, not when it comes to cylinder head work. Uh, so what then else? what else? But yeah, once it's all apart, then we, what, we get a basic part list going just to see what it needs. Now this thing is going to be completely done up we're gonna do valve guides for sure we're gonna replace them all even if they're even if they're good we're gonna replace them with the uh, which one's the the bronze we're gonna do some bronze valve guides and then all the valves are gonna get replaced with two jay-z valves so oversized baby we're gonna oversize them and that's where all that port work comes in that i was talking about earlier so yeah i know i said mild performance package but now nah, this shit's gonna get from what it's looking like, it's it's gonna be full on performance package. Hey, it's a one off, man. It's a one off. Yeah. Gotta do it right. Like I said, I don't want to be pulling it off while it's in the car. You know, taking it off, building the head, and then having it basically decommissioned for a while, and then having to put it all back in and wire it all back up and all that. Nah, you know, it's just gonna be one and done. So yeah. So basically, what we're gonna do today is gonna, be gonna take it apart, inspect it, make sure everything's good, and then we'll go from there. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Alrighty, let's get to it. off 
can see some of the, the scoring marks on the cam journals that uh, I was mentioning earlier in the video on both the intake and the exhaust side. And that's not too bad. This is normal shit that we see. Stuff like this. It's like a little groove. It's nothing out of the ordinary. So they'll just come out with a little buff. A little buff and polish. But yeah, let's take these uh, valves out. Now with all of the valves out of the head, what I'm doing here is I'm checking the valve stem to valve guide clearance. As you can see, a lot of these are rocking back and forth way too much. Now granted, all of the valve guides are gonna be replaced with bronze guides, but if this was a customer's head, we would recommend them to replace all of the exhaust guides. I already went through all of the intakes. The intakes very rarely wear out on any cylinder head, so everything's good here. Now that we know the condition of the valve guides, it is time to pressure check the casting. So the whole thing with the pressure check is we're looking for cracks in between the seats and from the seats into the cooling jacket. So if we see bubbles, it means there's a crack. But this thing looks like it's perfect. Ugh. Nothing from the head bolts, nothing from the spark plug holes, that's just leakage from the fitting, from being used all the time. Looks good. What do you think, Andrew? I think you need to double check. Yeah. So we always double check. Look at him.
No cracks in the ports? No plate leakage, no cracks in the ports. Everything is plugged up. Pressure so is holding. 30 PSI, baby. Uh, FYI, most heads do start around 15 pounds of pressure. And the, plugs, the plugs are good. Plugs are good to go. Casting plugs. Everything seems to be in order. Lost ports are pretty good. Call that baby good. It's good. Give us a thumbs up. Woo! So now that the head casting pressure check good, it's time to get sandblasted. And we're back in the garage. Now that we know that the head is good, now that it's been washed and sandblasted, we can more clearly see the detonation marks in all of the chambers. Now, this is the only one that doesn't have detonation marks, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, this one is actually the worst. You can probably see that there's a groove cut into the chamber here. But uh, like I said, this thing's gonna get poured and polished, so this is gonna be addressed once we start, you know, polishing all the chambers up and all that stuff. So uh, for now, this is really nothing too big to worry about. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm just really happy that I have a good head casting. So that's going to conclude all of the prep work that we're going to be doing to the 1JZ head. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this thing is going to be a back burner project. It's not going to be the main focus of the channel for now. Just because I still have the S12 to worry about, I'm almost done with that thing, man. Like, there's just a lot of stuff that I got to buy still, and it's just expensive stuff. So I'm trying to get the funds together for that, but... You know, with the any any Jay Z build, I mean, if you guys are familiar with them, they're very expensive. They can become pricey very quick, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna need to put some money aside for that. You know, as I go along with the S12. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna end the video here. Uh, just letting you guys know not to expect too many updates on the 1.5 Jay Z, but uh, when there's updates, there's updates. So, uh, yeah, for now, I think I'm just gonna end the video here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.